1 Peter 2, interesting that that's my day word that I wrote in December for today. And so I want to give it to you. I really believe it's for the church prophetically, even in this season, even as we had this time yesterday. And so come with me, please, in 1 Peter 2. Mark it in your Bible. If you cannot mark in your Bible, come to me. I'll give you a Bible that you can mark in, that you can write in. But... Um, Okay, let's take the notes. Let's hear what Holy Spirit wants to say to us. Amen. Therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies. Everybody make like a newborn baby? <laughs> okay. Like newborn babies. <coughs> Crave pure spiritual milk. So that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. My well, brother, my sister, may the Holy Spirit help you with that. You know, many times people can, Wah! because of a tantrum, because of a something, because I want this and I don't get it. And because of actually then selfishness or immaturity. And you know, you can grow up, like we said yesterday, many people... They became children of God, and then they grow up, but they never mature. And that's when I become, the child becomes childish, instead of the child becoming mature. The child becomes childish is when I can do it my way, and I want to do it my way, and I'm an adult now. Nobody can tell me what to do and how to tell me. That is the child that became childish. The child that grew up. But there's a child that becomes mature, and the mature knows that I need to be more dependent on God than when I was a baby. That is the mature. But that only if you understand how to take the word as that milk, like the baby is not, I must now remember, I must remember to take milk when I'm hungry. The baby says, no, never in your life. When he wants milk, he hello. And so you must be so dependent on the milk that it's so natural in you that I crave the word. I need the word. I need the word. But with a childlike, not childish, childlike attitude, get into the word. Let the word become part of you. Amen. That's the first facet that I need to understand. I'm a baby. I'm a child, and I need to grow up. Grow up in the right way, so that I will become mature. I'm not just an adult, I'm a mature <coughs> man and woman. Amen. Are you with one another, please? Now here we go on. As you come to Him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God, the precious to Him, the precious Cornerstone, cornerstone. He's the living stone, and either it will be the cornerstone or you will stumble. You will stumble over the truth, or it will become the cornerstone. That in the center of whatever life you're going to build, my brother, my sister, whatever life you're going to build with, with a marriage, with children, with your job, with your passion, with your whatever your dreams, the life that you're going to build, Christ needs to be the essence of everything. The cornerstone. If he's not the cornerstone, whatever you're going to build, you're going to fall over the principles of God, fall over the word, fall over. And whatever you're going to build is going to fall in on somebody that's going to get hurt. No, that's not God's plan for you. <clears throat> that's not God's plan for you. Come to know him. Come to know him. But come to know him in that childlike way that you take what God has for you. But don't become a professional builder. Always, always, always let it be precious to you that you're a child. So I'm a child, but in my, in my daily living, I need to mature that in, a, in an accurate, excellent way, I will build a life. I will build a, a life in that what God has for me. But never to lose the genuine, childlike, pure faith. That beauty that God has placed in you, that is that childlike faith. That child in you that says, I need my dad. I need my father. 
Amen. Let that be the most valuable to you. Even as you must mature and do a lot of things in very excellent ways. Amen. <coughs> okay. Come to him, the living stone. So, as he's the living stone, you also, everybody say, you also. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. Okay, like living stones. Not rolling stones. You know, there's rolling stones. There's even a band like that. Don't be a rolling stone. I'm free. I go where I want to. I go as a priest. But meanwhile, when the enemy do that, there you roll there. When the enemy does that, you roll there. And uh, I'm free. But that's pathetic. But living stone ish. You can feel very controlled when you are a living stone and you are built in. How did you become a living stone? When you gave your life to Christ. What happened when you gave your life to Christ? Holy Spirit came and lived in you. And then you became the temple of the Holy Spirit. But the temple of the Holy Spirit and the spiritual house is two different things. Why didn't you die when you gave your life to Christ? Because God has an agenda with you. God has an agenda with you. Are you with me? You gave your life to Christ. I mean, now it's for you to be with the Father. But why are you still on earth? Ask your neighbor, why are you here? Why are you not dead? <laughs> because God has a mandate for you. Okay? You with me? When Jesus went to heaven, he said, the Father will send the promise, the Holy Spirit. He will send the Holy Spirit. So that you will not be alone, but that he will be with you. No. He will send the Holy Spirit because he has an agenda. Acts 1 verse 8. When I go, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And you will respond to the mandate why he was given. What is the mandate why he was given? And you will be my witnesses. Here, there, to the ends of the earth. Are you with me? So Holy Spirit in you, there's an agenda. That God has, the God that is in you. You as the temple of the Holy Spirit that made you just a living stone. But God wants to build you in a spiritual house. Spiritual house, that's with people. Or you need to come close to people. You know, spiritual house, the, the, that stone. There's a stone from here. There's a stone from there. There's a stone underneath. There's a stone on top. Huh, you can feel maybe some pressure. Hopefully only your flesh. Definitely, definitely not your spirit. Because you, you are meant to be built in. And that is not you hop along and chaka 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 boom boom. There's the living stone and it went jumped up there. That's freaky. But somebody must take you. Some iman mut on your fat. Correct way. Must take you and build you in. You must allow people to build you into a spiritual house. Because it says there, offerings. A holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. There's a spiritual sacrifice you make as a living stone. But there's a spiritual sacrifice that God expects of you to make that you cannot do on your own. You can only make that spiritual sacrifice when you're part of a spiritual house. And the house making a specific spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God. That's when we come together in his name. We worship him in this corporate anointing. And in that corporate anointing, we offer a sacrifice to God. Because the one that is weak, that one that is weak, that one that is negative, that one that feels depressed, all lock into the spiritual corporate anointing and push for breakthrough. And in that moment, as we worship him, God is seeing that one is carrying that one in the spirit. And the strength of 20 in this place come with a weakness or the despondency of another fire that are here. And we all break through together. And God is pleased with that. God is pleased. Spiritual house where we pray for one another. Where we love one another. Because God said, that's the essence. You need to love me 
with the love that I've given you. And then you need to love yourself. And then you need to love others with the love that I've given you. That's the core command from God. But that sacrifice, that spiritual offering of the greatest commandment, you can only give to God in the context of a spiritual house. Because God says, you can say out there, Livingstone, you can say out there, I love God. But if you are not loving your neighbor, but you hate or you have issues, you're a liar, the word says. So I learn how to love him, even as I learn how to love my brother and my sister. Amen. Are you with me? I've seen that, yeah, amen, that I'm going through something and then there's somebody that needs to see me. And they come and sit in front of me. I think, what on earth am I going to say to them? And then I open my mouth and the Holy Spirit starts to minister. But I'm more ministering to myself than to that person. And God, by His grace, placed that person in front of me. I needed that guy with uh, that specific need. I needed that the guy to come and sit with where they in front of me with this problem so that I can hear the Holy Spirit speaking through me that what I need to change. Ish? Only happened with me or with some of you guys also? Huh? Yeah, man. God is awesome. He doesn't waste time with our, with our lives. So, <coughs> be the living stone. Be the living stone with the Holy Spirit in you with an agenda. He's in you with an agenda. He made you a living stone because you need to be built in. Built in. Baby, Grow up to be mature. Living stone, be built in for a sac spiritual house, bringing the sacrifices unto the Lord. Amen. Then we are jumping to verse 9. You are, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And a lot of you guys know that scripture. You know, that was the first thing that God established for the guys that were 430 years in slavery. Israel, 430 years in slavery. God promised for years and years and years and years and decades that Israel will inherit Canaan. You stand on the promises, 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 but God will not take you into that promised land. God will not take you into that promised land if not, first of all, you establish your identity in Him, with Him, because that's what God did. Remember? We talked about this 300 times. When God took them out of Egypt, he brought him to them to himself, the word says. That's Exodus 19 and Exodus 20 is the Ten Commandments. But if, before he gave the commandments, before he gave the principles for life, the Ten Commandments, he first established identity, he told them, you saw how I brought you on eagle's wings and I brought you to myself. I didn't bring you to Canaan. What did Moses say to Pharaoh? God says, let my people go because I promised them Canaan and they need to go to Canaan. Did he say that? No. He said, God says, let my people go so that they can worship me in the desert. Every time. Let my people go because I want them to go and worship me. Your way out of Egypt is not, if you pray to get out of Egypt so that you can go to Canaan, you're missing the point. And maybe you will pray till you die and then you will go to heaven and then you will hear what you were supposed to pray. God, take me out of Egypt. Take me out of slavery so that I will understand how to worship you wherever. Wherever you're going to take me. If it's in the desert, wherever you're going to take me. And you're going to bring me to yourself. Out of Egypt, out of slavery. Out of the slavery of fear, anxiety, stress. Insecurities, rejection, depression, whatever. Take me out of this place. Not just to be free. Not to inherit Canaan. But first of all, to bring me to you. Because when I'm with you, fear is gone. Anxiety is gone. All those worries, they are gone. Because the Lord is my shepherd. And because the Lord is my shepherd. Not the Lord is my shepherd and he provided that, 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 that. Therefore, I will have no lack. No. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. Not because of all the things, first of all, he did. And then, <coughs> I have no lack. 
but because he's in my life, he's my God, he's my shepherd, therefore I know I will have no lack because in him I have everything. Come on, make him the center of everything and he will open it up for you. Because in that is a lot where it's not like circumstance is going to change. Chung, 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 everything changed. Yeah, I made the Lord my shepherd, seek the kingdom, and whoa, all the breakthroughs and all the money and the this and the Ferrari followed, you know? No. But when the Lord is my shepherd, when I make him the center, there's a supernatural contentment coming in me. A thankfulness for what I have. And suddenly I can see the beauty of life. Suddenly I can see the small things and the thousand things that I can write down to say thank you for. And that's a miracle. That's a miracle. God's going to help you. God's going to help me. Amen. <coughs> okay, let's go for a first point. You're a unique generation. What are we talking about? You're a chosen people. A chosen people. If I say there's something amazing, amazing that's going to happen. And for that, I choose you, I choose you, I choose you. And you know this is going to be amazing, amazing. And you are chosen. You know there's something rising up in you that something's going to happen. When God says you're a chosen people, he wants you to have a certain attitude, to have a certain expectation. He chose me for what? He chose me for what? Are you with me? <clears throat> it, was, uh, it was so amazing. After I messed up with the guy that committed suicide, and I had to phone him three days, three days before the time, and I picked up the phone two times, and I put it down, and I wrote the letter, and posted it the Sunday, and the Tuesday he committed suicide. And to get that forgiveness before the Lord, it took me years. But I said I had to run to God, and, and one thing I said, God, what must I do? And uh, as I was in the army for a year and a half, you know, you know, in a song group, three guys singing lead bass guitar, and we went through the whole country, Namibia, and every day singing the gospel school and army camp and camps. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I said, God, what must I do? And uh, God gave me a name for the first time. In the time when I was so ashamed of how I failed, when I ran to God, God is something that I'm not supposed to receive at that moment. I can't remember. It was something like Johan Labeskachny, Standard 8. Went to the school the next day where we had a, had a <coughs> performance, a ministry time. Asked the lady, yes, there is a Johan Labeskachny in Standard 8. I mean, I was just cracking up about God. David said, take not thy presence from me. In the midst of my shame, in the midst of my failure. Oh man, I was crying, and just because of that verse, thank you, God, for your presence. When you give your shame to God, God will turn it into his glory. And from there, school to school, God will give me a name. But you know, chosen, chosen generation. I would be there, and then God gave me a name, and I called the guy out in the school. And afterwards, the, the, the headmaster will ask me, are you a seer? Yes, yeah, sinner. I said, no, 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 God, you're just the, an amazing thing. Because that was the worst guy in the whole school. He's the main peanut in the pucky, you know, doing the biggest lot of rubbish. And afterwards, that, those guys, I can't remember the one that didn't do it, who would just crack up and give their lives to Christ. Because they know that day, God chose them. For a specific purpose. Because he loved him. The one guy, I shared this, just make his view, didn't, didn't hear it before. The last day in the army of this year and a half, that we were just sharing the gospel, singing the gospel, leading people to, to the Lord, and even driving out devils and whatever. And uh, I said, God, just give me another name. Just give me one last name. And I was singing... And I was like singing, but I'm thinking, where, 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 no name. And it's my time to speak. So I said, the 10th row, the 12th person. <coughs> what is your name? Cornelius. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's my name. And I said, no, I, okay, God, I wouldn't have believed you. 
But God had an amazing thing in that guy's life. The one place God picked the guy, chosen, afterwards leading to the Lord. Headmaster asked me, what did you do with that guy? I thought, I'm in trouble. He said, no, because I had to expel him. Among the thousand kids, one guy had to be expelled. It was that guy. And he had no time for the administration of everything. So he said, go and look at that gospel performance, that uh, Christian performance. And afterwards, we will do the paperwork for you to be expelled. And God picked that guy out of the thousands. I said, no, he gave his life to Christ. Mom and dad, our colleagues. And he says he's ashamed because he's stealing from other kids' food because there's no food. So he's stealing food for him and his little sister. And the headmaster said, okay, we will give him another chance. Chosen. Oh, man, God has chosen you. And in that sense, you need to understand the awesomeness of his grace over your life. Why are you not in a Muslim family? <coughs> when your dad and mom is telling you, if you want a great place in heaven, just go and blow yourself up among a lot of people. Why are you not there? Do you understand the awesomeness of his grace? Nor the chosen people by God's grace. And God didn't reject them. But we say that God rejected the, Mo the Muslims if we cannot at least start to pray for them. Start to reach out. Start to say, God help the churches everywhere to start to raise up. To be raised up. So that so look away from yourself. Amen. God chose to die for them also. Amen. <coughs> chosen people. Next one. Ah, sorry. Who called you? You're a chosen people. I just want to add on to that. There's the God who chose you. But there's a lot of demons also who chose you. According to the word, there's demons assigned to your life to destroy you. Ah, maybe not be able to take you into hell. But... Even though we cannot take him to hell, let's bring hell to him on earth at least. So there's four or five demons. And that demon of rejection, that demon with a hurt, that demon of unforgiveness, that demon of comparison so that you put yourself down, that demon of stress, that demon of negativity. How will we find the strategy? And will, we will call him into depression. We will call him into the temptation. We will call him into judging others. We will call him in, into criticizing others. We will call him into to judge the person or to take an inner vow so that he will become ten times worse. Yes. You are chosen for those ten demons to be assigned to your life. As you sit here, there's demons assigned to you from hell. There's strategy for, from hell for your life. Because the devil is not stupid. Hello. But you choose. And I'd say choose to get today again. Who has called you? Who made you a chosen people? God and God alone. Come to that place to understand that. Who called you? Number two. What are you doing now to eternity, for eternity? Let's try the four. What are you doing now <coughs> and from now on to eternity? <coughs> Excuse. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. What are we talking about? Once again, royal priesthood. We see in Revelation, you will rule and reign. Rule and reign. Everybody say rule and reign. As kings and priests. That's three, three four times that is said in the, in the, uh, in the book Revelation. For eternity, kings and priests. Kings in the name of Jesus, priests for Jesus' name's sake. Kings that you will rule with the king of kings. There's a concept about that. Yes, king over the worldly rubbish, Hamor's kings. But actually, at the end of the day, he's the king of all kings. You are called kings. No, I know and I don't want to, please, don't go and judge people and don't go and make a major thing of this. <coughs> but I want to mention it. There's songs, there's things where people say, you are king's kids. You've heard that before. Yeah. You're not a king's kid. Because Jesus is the king and he is the father. And Father God is not your grandpa. Father God is not your grandfather. That Father God and His Son is Jesus, and you're a 
child of Jesus. Jesus is a kinerkis. You're not a child of Jesus. You are in Jesus. And Jesus is in you. The king in you. And you in the king. And that makes you kings with the king of kings. As children of the father. Not that somebody wants to try and freak you out with the wrong um, theology. <coughs> Nobody has a bad attitude that says that. I think the heart of what they are saying is you are royalty. You must remember that you are royalty. I'm a child. I'm a daughter of the king. No, you are reigning with the king of kings. You will rule and reign as kings and priests forever with Jesus Christ. Seated with Christ. The right hand of the Father. Are you with me? Please, please go with that. A royal priesthood. Kings and priests. As priests, you will minister unto the Lord in his presence. As priests. As kings, you will look into the world. You will look at your flesh and it must submit in the name of Jesus. So there's victory for you today. More than conquerors. You have overcome for greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. You have. Not you going to overcome. Not you going to win. Because greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. No, the victory is already in you. But you must let it come forth. You're already a champion because the champion is living in you. Amen. That's you as royalty. And this royalty is not authority to to oppress royalty royalty has to do with authority that is beautiful god's authority is beautiful for hell in your flesh is oh, i must just like that i must just you know frack you know and sacrifice everything but if i understand who he is there's beauty in his authority that is a royalty royalties you know when royalty comes in and, and the people say wow but a million times more. Wow. For the authority and the royalty of God. Amen. Let it be so, man. So understand, what are you doing for eternity today? <coughs> today when you worship him, that you what you're going to do for eternity. But today, with a certain quality that you will not have in heaven. And that is that in spite of what I feel, in spite of what I see, still I all honor you. You will not be able to say that in heaven. Do it today. Don't miss the opportunity that you have. Amen. You have it? Royal priesthood. A holy nation. Number three. Who positioned you? They said some demons assigned to you. It says, you will be positioned in the hurt that people may gave you in the disappointments that you believe that you got with people in the way that your mom or your dad said you're rubbish you will take those words and you will be positioned in that rubbish your position in your circumstances your position in your sin in your weakness you are positioned in the condemnation your position in religion trying to get out of it or trying to have favor with god because you are positioned in religion or you understand that god says you're a holy nation, and holy means separated for God. You are taken and put in a certain place, in a certain position. You don't have that job just because God has placed you there. But there you are separated by God, called by God to have a certain impact. You are the connection on earth, in this building as it is in heaven. In this office as it is in heaven. In this company as it is in heaven. In this school, at this university as it is in heaven. In this soccer team as it is in heaven. In this, are you with me? A holy, holy in the essence of holy. Maybe in the past, I saw that with myself. When you sing holy, how the Lord is holy. And then what does it mean? I just, it just means I'm in trouble, I'm not holy. And I must become like him and he's holy. He's without sin and I'm full of sin. No, holy, first of all, he's, he's separated, absolutely uncomparable with any other thing, with any other God. Holy is, I don't have the words to compare you even with anything else. Your beauty, your splendor, your uncomparable value. And that's the word holy. 
That's the word holy. And God is putting you in that uncomparable beauty. A holy nation. I'm putting you in a place where you're supposed to not compare you to anybody. Or anything. Except it's me and you in this place. It's me and you as a nation. Once again. Not just as a person. <coughs> you're part of a people. You're part of a nation. You're part of a spiritual house. Living stone. Are you with me? Who positioned you? Make sure it's God. And not that other Juaras that position you in depression. That position you in the rubbish. That you go and lay down and you're saying, ah, whatever. Let's see what happens. No. Don't give up. Give over to God. Amen. Number four. To whom do you belong? Ah, we all know that. To whom do you belong? He says, a holy nation, God's special possession. You can write that down. God's special possession. You belong to me. <coughs> now we sing the song, and it's okay. When you say, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I surrender my life to you. That, that's good that we sing it. But you know, when you gave your life to Christ, it's in any case he is. Lord, I give you back what belongs to you. Forgive me for stealing it this week. But I did with my heart what I did. Oh, God, forgive me. It belongs to him. You do what you want with your life. You're a thief, man. Don't be a thief. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to God. That's why where, where, where Paul says to the Corinthians, you don't belong to yourself. Honor God. Verheerlik God in your lichaam. Uh, honor God in your body. Um, glorify God in your body. Be, and understand that you don't belong to yourself. You belong to Him because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your temple is, belongs to God. God. So understand. But to who do you belong? Now that demon is assigned to you. See, You belong to rejection. You belong to the situation. You belong to your circumstances. You belong to what people say, you're a piece of rubbish. You belong to your feelings. What you feel, that's who you are. And all these demons tell you who owns you. I belong to myself. I have my own opinion. I have my own way of thinking. I have God has given me a freedom. Yeah, freedom to go and burn in hell. God has given you freedom to have hell on earth and then still go to heaven, but that's the freedom you have. Or you decide, no, I will honor the one who bought me with a price. There's no other price paid on earth or in heaven, ever, ever, from eternity to eternity, that will be so intensely, intensely perfect and awesome. And that is Christ on the cross. He bought you with his blood. When you, when you rent a house and you're in the house and the owner comes, and the owner of the house comes and he says, this cannot happen, that cannot happen, that cannot happen, that cannot happen, by contract. You don't comply with that, police will come. You'll be kicked out of there. <coughs> kicked out of the place. Are you with me? Because the owner has authority. Don't live as a squatter or as a thief in a house that doesn't belong to you. I'm talking about your life. Your life belongs to him. Honor the owner. Let's say, I will honor the owner. Okay, number five. There's only seven, so take courage. What does your owner expect? What does the owner expect of you? You'll water the garden, you'll do this, you'll do that. You'll not break the windows. You'll not go and live in the ceiling. You'll not bring 20 snakes in there. And you'll not all do all this stuff. Okay, what is he saying? A royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Why? Why? So that you what? That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So that you will declare his praises. Why are you still on earth? Because you need to declare God's awesomeness. Declare his praises. Declare why he is so awesome. That's why you didn't die when you gave your life to Christ and you are now for eternity in heaven. You are here because God has a mandate with you. God has a mandate with you. Don't walk out here and forget about the mandate and just take the mandate from hell with demons assigned to your life. 
walk out here and say, Holy Spirit, it's you and you alone and I belong to him and whatever the owner of this life is saying, that I will do. And the major summary of what he said I must do is I must declare his praises. I must brag about him. I must brag about him. My mouth must be full, full, full of the praises of God. David says in the Psalms, what do, does your owner expect? Rejection. But you say you belong to rejection. I feel rejected. So I am rejected because you feel rejected. Okay, believe that your feeling is worth and has more authority than the word of God. Okay, you feel rejected, then you are rejected. That's what the demon says. If you feel rejected, then you are rejected. Just submit to me. I'm your demon. No, I'm not your demon. I'm the demon coming as an angel of light. <coughs> Feeling sorry for yourself. And this is how I feel. No, what do you feel? What do you feel? You, you are a spirit, reborn, perfect. Everything became new in your spirit. Holy Spirit testifying your spirit. Crying out, Abba. What do you feel? You are a spirit. You're not a freakazoid baboon. A baboon doesn't have spirit. He just has soul and body. So he has just the feelings and the intellect and the will and the body. But you're not baboon. Tell your neighbor you're not a baboon, man, woman. What is a female baboon? Uh, baboonish. I don't know what. But okay, what are we saying? What do you feel? You, the real you. But don't let you come and let some other demon rubbish tell you you are whatever your soul is saying, whatever your emotions are saying, whatever your mindset is saying. That is who you are. Rubbish. First point of deception. That's not what God has for you. What does your owner expect of you to do? So hear the voice of your owner. Okay? He legally, 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 the only one that legally bought you. You sold yourself for rubbish. You sold yourself for a, I don't know if it's an apple. We always say it's an apple, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Whatever the snake offered you, you sold yourself. <sighs> Let him mess up your life. But God took ownership. Amen. Number six. Have you responded to the voice in the darkness? Have you responded to the voice in the darkness? It's the devil. No, it's God that spoke into darkness. Why? What are we saying? Who has called you out of darkness into his wondrous light, into his wonderful light. You were in darkness, and in darkness you heard the voice of God. Otherwise, how did you come out of darkness? I've called you out of darkness, so that in the darkness you heard his voice. But the problem is, in the darkness we can throw such a tantrum. <coughs> a little baby that's supposed to crave after the word of God. I can throw such a tantrum in the darkness. There's no way I can hear the voice calling me out of darkness. In the darkness, I can feel so confused. I don't have a cooking clue what God is doing in my finances, in my relationships, in what I'm going through. Everything is one uh, mess. Maybe just in one area of your life. And you don't see, and you want to see, and you want to see. But the light is not going to come here. He's calling you out of darkness. Are you with me? He's not going to come into the darkness. He wants you to honor him and respect his voice. So that's why God says so many times, so many times, be still, be still, be still and know. Let that voices become still in you. The voice of rejection that is calling you more into darkness, into rejection, calling you more into confusion, calling you more into a lot of rubbish that you feel fear, that you feel the stress, the anxiety, or the whatever you feel in the past. Not anymore. In Jesus' name. But in the place of darkness, don't try and figure out everything in the darkness. Hear the voice of God and you will see the light. Not in the light so that you can understand everything. No, in the light so that you see Him. Many times without understanding anything. But because you are with Him, you will know how to declare the praises of him, not to declare all the answers for life, but declare the beauty of who God is in your life. That he is the way, the truth, and the life, and the bread of life, and the resurrection, and the life. 
Oh, come on. Let God do that. Have you responded to the voice in the darkness? Because in darkness, my brother, my sister, I let the baby throw a tantrum. When a baby throws a tantrum, he sounds like, hey. Is that so? Hey, you all know that. Anybody that can throw a baby tantrum? Okay, that sounds like a duck with uh, <laughs> constipation. But okay, but it, it was a good try. Thanks. <coughs> what are we saying, guys? That baby, when you throw a tantrum, there's no way you can hear the voice of God. How can you hear that? Otherwise, the bigger the tantrum, the less you will hear God. Be silent, be still, and know that I am God. That I have all your answers. Know that I am God. I will be your God. You'll be my people. Well, that's what we said, eh? Chosen people, holy nation, special possession. May God help you with that. Last one. Which God is helping you? Oh, where are we talking now? Just read on. Once you were not a people. You were just rubbish out there. But now you are the people of God. You are, you are the people of God. Understand to whom you belong. Hey, once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And mercy, write that down if you don't know that, is God's practical help. Grace is God's enablement. Amazing enablement that saved a wretch like me. God enabled me to become a child of God. That's grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. But mercy is God's practical help. That is not an assist of shame. No shame. Don't, don't tell somebody, oh, shame. That's rubbish, man. Don't put that. Don't put that shame on somebody. But have compassion. Compassion is the right thing. Are you with me? Have compassion. And from a place of compassion, give practical help. And that is called Mercy, compassion, practical help. Everybody say compassion, practical help. That is mercy. That is mercy. So who's the God that's helping you? The God that is helping me is my flesh and my ability because I have the skill to do this. So then I will find finances. If I do this and I do that and I have the capacity up here, get the brains, the brains, and I have the skill and I have this and I have that. And my gift will make room for me. Even put a scripture with. But if his God is not in it, what on earth are you doing? I don't know. Because your skill will help you and not God. But God and his strategy about your skill. Okay, that's how it's supposed to be. Now you're building on the rock. The, road, the, the storm will come. The house will stand as a testimony for the Lord. Okay. But built with your talents. Built with your opinion. Built with, oh, that one hurt me. Or I'm not allowed to do this. I'm not allowed Built with that rubbish, like a fool, not one of you. But you have the wise builder and the foolish builder. The one is a fool, the one is a wise man. Fool, because you can have an excellent life. But you have the building plans, you are the architect, you have the engineer, you have all the guys that can help you. And you sit there, I don't know what to do. That's a fool. And the, guy, the other guy that has absolutely nothing, 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 nothing. And he knows nothing. And he says, I cannot build. He's an honest man. Even with integrity. But the fool is the one that has everything and still says, I don't know what to do. No. Pray for wisdom. For God gives to everybody unconditionally. James 1. Hey. Who ask him for wisdom, he will give him the wisdom. He will give him. The wisdom. What? Who is helping you? Your opinion, your religion, your, your performance. I, if I do these things right, then God will accept me. No, man. What God is helping? There's a God. There's a true God. And this God is so ready to help you. If you just can get out of the way so that he can come through and do it. And do it. Then you will see. Then you will see the miracles. How God will just take over. Take over. As you know here, when you look at the farm, never, never, never forget it was God's mercy. It was God's mercy. Uh, this pastor was fed up when he sat there at Gwen Bali, looking at the ground there, fed up and nearly screaming out. Not, not tantrum, tantrum, but a little bit of a tantrum. And saying, God, what are we going to do? Six months gone. 
Must we close Creare? Must we close the ministry? What are we going to do? Yeah, and why am I here? I'm wasting my time. I'm just sharing my heart because maybe God doesn't know my heart. You know, he definitely knows your heart, unfortunately. And, but from that place, and God just did it. This is just God's grace. In spite of the lack of faith, in spite of the laughing while pointing at this ground, in spite of the tantrum there in front of Gwen Barley, in spite of God just came in his grace. And what the spiritual father prayed for just for we fell in our laps when we received this 215 hectares. God is awesome. Amen. Remember that. Which God is helping you today? I'm asking you. Jesus said, I will be going and I'm sending and the father will send one to you. He will be the comforter, standby, counselor, and also he will be the helper. Who's the God who's helping you today? Holy Spirit is so ready to help you. Honor him for who he is. And his practical help will be there. Thank you, God, that we can just surrender our hearts to you. Come and do that, what you want to do in and through our lives. God, forgive us for the selfish way of doing things. We don't want to be rolling stones, living stones, built in. Help us, God, to even if people disappointed us, hurt us. God, even if it's difficult to trust people, forgive us in that, Lord, but help us. Give us the grace to understand how people must take our lives and build us into a spiritual house for those sacrifices acceptable unto you. Thank you, my Lord. Help us that you will, we will grow up, Lord, as children, not to become childish, but to become mature where we need we need more to be dependent even on you. We thank you for that. Thank you. We are your special treasure, Lord. I pray that every man and woman in this place will understand their value, their value, their awesome value in you right now that they will take it in Jesus' name, your special possession. And God, forgive us for stealing from your possession, stealing from your property, that we could think we can think what we want, with our souls. We can do what we want with our body. We can entertain negativity. We can entertain rubbish. God, forgive us for that, Lord. We will not walk as thieves, but God, our lives belong to you. You bought us with a price, and we will respect you as the owner. And so each one of us, we make that decision. God, even as we're going to partake in communion now, Lord, that we will understand through communion, we will remember that you paid the price. You bought us through your blood your body you bought us with a price we honor you for that we thank you for that father in jesus name amen if you know the lord and you know your life is right with him you don't have a problem with somebody that you didn't forgive um or if you just don't have peace to take partake in communion today it's okay but otherwise we're inviting you to partake in communion and remember communion one of the biggest things is to remember, to remember, to remember. Do this as you affectionately remember me, the word says. This is for us to remember the grace of God from where we come. I read to you from 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks... He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me, to remember what I've done for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. So then whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everybody ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, honoring the body of Christ, will eat and drink judgment on themselves. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will speak to every man and woman in this place in what they may, must make right in their hearts, 
about the lifestyle, about the life, about other people. God, and I pray that we will, in this place, just with such a thankful heart, remember what you've done for us. We honor you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. As we say, Amen. It's over to you. Have a time with God. Even if you want to pray with someone, one or two or three together, um, let's enjoy His presence with communion. Thank you, Lord, for your body. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. God, that according to your word, we have such boldness to enter through the blood, and through the blood alone, through the excellence of your sacrifice. We have boldness to enter into the throne room of grace. We thank you for that, and I pray that grace over every man, woman here, and every child. God, let it be so that we will be arrested by what you've done. The word of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. The cross that we will boast in nothing else except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We walk out here knowing afresh that we are crucified with Christ. We no longer live, but you live in and through us. Come and take your rightful place in and allow our lives, please, Lord. So we pray in Jesus' name. So all say, Amen, Amen. Let it be so.